Now, if I have a set of data, and I want to kind of try to figure out roughly what the middle value of that data is, that's a very useful thing to know. As, we, as we've been saying, if I have a bunch of people lined up against the wall and I measure their heights, I can take their average value. Now add everybody up, divide by the number of people, that's gonna give me a nice representative number um, that represents that data set, that, that I can just give that number to somebody and say, hey, their mean is this, and that's very useful. However, the mean can become misleading if I have a situation like this. What if I have, uh, you know, put everybody up against the wall and then I have like four or five really short people, maybe even kids, right? Like three or four feet tall people. And then I have five basketball players. Or what if I just have one basketball player? What if I have like 15 people that are kind of average height or maybe a little bit below average height. And then I have one giant seven foot five inch basketball player. Now, if I want to try to figure out a nice middle ground for this uh, set of data, I might try averaging. But when I do that, I'm going to add everybody's height up, including the tall guy's height. And then I'm going to divide by the number of people. And so I am going to arrive at an average value, and that's great. However, because I have this one outlier, and that's what you do call it. You call it an outlier when one data point kind of, kind of just seems to be out of place. He's so far skewed from everybody else that he almost seems to be like not even supposed to be there, right? then you're averaging that into the data set and this very, very tall person's height is gonna raise the average value up and it might mislead, uh, you know, mislead you into thinking that the average is higher than it, than it really is. Because you know, the whole point of averaging is to figure out what's a good representative number for your data set. But if I have one guy that's really tall compared to everybody else and I average him in there, it's gonna kind of, the average value is still gonna be the average value, but it's going to misrepresent the collection of data because that one person pulled up the average so much. It's kind of like in school, you know? If you're, if you're in class and most of the grades are running in, in the 80s, you know, like 82, 83, 85, and you got that one guy in the class that gets 100. Right? Well, great for him. He's a smart kid. Great, wonderful, good for him. However, he's kind of not representative of most of the people in the class. Maybe that guy already knew the, the stuff. Maybe that guy is, is just a genius and it's not really fair to lump him in and average it in because his grade was so much higher than everyone else's. So that's when averaging kind of isn't very useful. And so we have a couple of other ways to look at a representative number for the rough center of a data set. One of them is called the median. And you might have heard this before, um, especially when you, they talk about incomes. Like when they take survey, usually they don't say the average income of, of everybody in Houston, Texas is such and such. Usually they'll say the median income is such and such because you're always gonna have some people that are extremely poor and you're gonna have some people that are extremely rich, but the most of the people what you're really interested in are the kind of the middle section of people, and so you don't wanna really average in those outliers, you wanna calculate the median, which is defined to be literally the middle value in an ordered list of data. So it's literally not much of a calculation at all. It's literally the middle value. You line your values up and you choose the one in the middle and that's called the median. So uh, just to kind of expand on this a little bit or make it even clearer, if odd number of samples, then you choose the median is the middle value. And we'll do an example in a second. But if it's an even number of samples, then the median is the average of uh, two middle samples. All right, this looks like a lot of writing, but it's very, very simple, and I'll just show you that right now. What if I want to calculate the median of the numbers? Eight, nine, two, seven, three, four, and six. And I say, what's the median of this? First thing you want to do is you want to find the middle value in an ordered list. So what we need to do first before we do anything else is order the list. So we want to change it around so that we have the smallest value first. So that'd be two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Just rearrange this thing into an ordered list. You look here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 
three on this side, three on this side, this looks like the nice middle value. If I choose this as my median, I'm gonna have three on this side and three on this side, bracketing it. So the median is six. Now you can see what I was talking about. If this were like, you know, the, the heights or some of people in a room, and this guy over here was the basketball player that was super tall and everybody else's height was reasonable height, then if we averaged it, we would be averaging in his height and kind of screwing up the, the relative value of everything. But if we just order everybody and choose the middle value, then we're not really going to be considering that outlier in terms of representing our data set. So it might make more sense, especially when talking about household incomes or something, to give the median household income instead of doing the average, because when you average, I'm gonna be taking into account all of the mega millionaires and then all of the super extremely poor people. So it, it, you could have a lot of outliers there screwing things up. So a lot of times you'll choose the median. Notice also, this is an odd number of data points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is what I was trying to say there. If it's an odd number of samples, the median is the middle, which is what that is. All right, what that is. Now let's go and find another one. Uh, what if I have five, seven, one, four, eight, nine, eight, and nine, and I wanna find the median of that. First thing we do is we order the data set. So it's gonna be one, four, five, then we have a seven, then we have an eight, but notice we have two eights. So I have another eight, and then I have a nine here and another nine. So when you have repeated values, that's okay. You still need to list everything. It's just that you list them in ascending order. Now when you try to find the middle value for median, you know, median means middle, it's gonna be difficult because I have an even number. I have eight samples here. So I can't really choose seven to be the middle because then I have three on this side and four on this side. I can't choose eight for the middle for the same reason. I cannot find a value that really is in the middle. So what I do is I take the middle two values and I average them. Seven plus eight over two is gonna give me 7.5. That's what that is. So the median in this case is 7.5, which is exactly what I was saying before. If it's an even number of samples, the median is the average of the two middle samples, which is kind of what I was pointing out. It's not hard to remember that whenever you actually try to choose the middle value there and realize that you really can't uh, do it. So that's about all I want to talk about median because you know it's important and it's great, but it's a very easy concept. So you just order your data set, choose the middle value. If you can't choose the middle value, then you're going to have to pick the inner uh, center most uh, two values and average those. All right, finally, we want to discuss something called the mode of a set of data, which is something that's occasionally used. It is just simply the value in the data set that occurs most frequently. All right, so the one that occurs most frequently. This would be uh, very useful if you had a data set with lots and lots and lots of values near a certain range. Then if you're trying to find that representative number that correctly describes and represents your data set, maybe a mode might make more sense if you had a lot of repeated values. It just depends on what you're trying to do. So for instance, if we had uh, the following set of data, if we had four, six, four, one, eight, seven, seven, two, five, seven, and I said find the mode. Uh, you can do it without reordering it, but really it's probably just easier if I order uh, in, in, in ascending order the data set. So that'd be one, two, four, four, because I have two fours here. Uh, five, six, seven, 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 because I have three sevens there, and then an eight. And so then all you have to do is scan down the line uh, and realize that this is the value that occurs the most frequently. So the mode is just the number seven. And that's how you find that. I'm gonna do a couple more, uh, additional examples with mode um, because you know there are a couple of different quick little cases. So this is the easiest case. When you order it and you clearly have one number that is repeated more often than the others, that is the mode. What if I have four, three, seven, one, eight, nine, and six? and I wanna find the mode of that. So again, I recommend, just to make it easy, 
that you line these guys up in ascending order. So one, three, four, um, six, seven, eight, nine. One, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I look and I say, which one is repeated more than the others? Well, I look at it and actually none of them are repeated. So when you have a data set where no value is repeated, then you cannot have a mode. So in this particular case, you'll just write down no mode. And that would be your answer because there just does not exist a mode for that set of data. Finally, let's look at the last one here. Two, seven, five, two, eight, nine, seven, and three. And I want to find the mode of this guy. So I would do the same thing. I would order it here and I would say two, two, three, uh, then five, then seven and seven because I have two sevens here. And then I would have eight and nine. And I scan my data set and I try to figure out uh, which one is repeated more. Well, I have two repeated twice and I have seven also repeated twice. There is no single number that's actually repeated the most. We have two numbers repeated an equal number of times. So we have actually two modes here. So the modes, plural, is two and seven. And that's what you would circle on your test. And you would call this bimodal. It's just another descriptive word. It just means two modes, bimodal. All right, mode is a very simple topic. We're not gonna do any more problems with that. Uh, meeting is a very simple topic. We're not going to do any more problems with that, but we will use these concepts as we move through statistics. A lot of times you'll be given a data set, you'll be given its mode, be given its median. Uh, it might tell you, hey, this is a bimodal distribution or something, and you might say, what does that mean? Well, now you know what it means. Mode is a very simple concept. Bimodal means there's just two modes, very simple concept. Median, very simple concept. Uh, we talked about means, sample means, population means, weighted means in previous sections. Those are simple uh, concepts also once we kind of break them down. All of these concepts we've been studying, the mean, uh, which is population and sample mean, the median and the mode, those are different ways to kind of look and find out what a representative value would be for the center of my uh, the, center of, the center of my sample. If I had to pick one number that represented roughly the center, Sometimes I might use an average, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes I might use a median, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes I might use a mode, if I really want to know what the most frequent uh, value is. And it just depends on what you're doing. So keep these guys in mind. Follow me on to the next section. We're going to continue learning about our sample data uh, and just incrementally increasing your knowledge with practical examples to build these skills and statistics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.